The following presentation of the Mass is made possible by the generous support of the wonderful parishioners of Our Ladies and Sacred Heart in Newton. I'm Father Dan. It's great to have you all with us for this celebration of the Mass on the fifth Sunday of Lent, especially during this difficult time where we're coping with the virus. Father Dennis is our presider. Father Kevin and myself will be concelebrating. Next weekend will be Palm Sunday. Father Dennis, please lead us in prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with, with your spirit. spirit. And so, dear friends, we gather on this fifth Sunday of Advent. We don't come together, but we are the body of Christ. And there's a bond stronger even than our physical presence that makes us one. And today we enter that period that our tradition called once Passion Tide, where we focus on the mystery of Christ dying and rising. In the first reading, we hear from the prophet Ezekiel God's promise to raise the dry bones of captive Israel in freedom. And in the gospel, Jesus stands before the death, the power of death of his friend Lazarus, and shouts, come out. To prepare ourselves then to celebrate these Lenten mysteries, let us pause in God's presence and remember our need for mercy, our sinfulness, and ask for God's pardon. I confess to, to Almighty God, God and to you, my brothers and sisters, sisters that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have, have mercy. mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. By your help, Lord, we beseech you. May we walk eagerly in that same charity with which out of love for the world your Son handed himself over to death. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord, O my people, I will open your graves, and have you rise from them, and bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you shall know that I am the Lord, when I open your graves, and have you rise from them, O my people. I will put my spirit in you, that you may live, and I will settle you upon your land. Thus you shall know that I am the Lord. I have promised, and I will do it says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. With, With the, the Lord, Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. redemption. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplication. With, With the, the Lord, Lord there, there is mercy and fullness of redemption. redemption. If you, O Lord, mark iniquities, Lord, who can stand? But with you is forgiveness, that you may be revered. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. I trust in the Lord, my soul trusts in his word. More than sentinels wait for the dawn. Let Israel wait for the Lord. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. For with the Lord is kindness, and with him is plenteous redemption, and he will redeem Israel from all their iniquities. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, those who are in the flesh 
cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. On the contrary, you are in the Spirit, if only the Spirit of God dwells in you. Whoever does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is alive because of righteousness. If the Spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, the one who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also, through his Spirit dwelling in you. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. Whoever believes in me will never die. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Now a man was ill, Lazarus from Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who had anointed the Lord with perfumed oil and dried his feet with her hair. It was her brother Lazarus who was ill. So the sisters sent word to Jesus, saying, Master, the one you love is ill. When Jesus heard this, he said, The illness is not to end in death, but is for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister, Mary, sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that he was ill, he remained for two days in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to his disciples, let us go up to Judea. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just trying to stone you and you want to go back there? Jesus answered, are there not 12 hours in a day? If one walks during the day, he does not stumble because he sees the light of this world. But if one walks at night, he stumbles because the light is not in him. He said this and then told them, Our friend Lazarus is asleep, but I am going to awaken him. So the disciples said to him, Master, if he is asleep, he will be saved. But Jesus was talking about his death, while they thought he meant ordinary sleep. So then Jesus said to them clearly, Lazarus has died. And I am glad for you that I was not there, that you may believe. Let us go to him. So Thomas called Didymus said to his fellow disciples, let us also go to die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, only about two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him, but Mary sat at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise. Martha said to him, I know he will rise in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even if he dies, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I have come to believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one who is coming into the world. When she had said this, she went and called her sister Mary secretly, saying, The teacher is here and asking for you. 
As soon as she heard this, she rose quickly and went to him. For Jesus had not yet come into the village, but was still where Martha had met him. So when the Jews who were with her in the house comforting her saw Mary get up quickly and go out, they followed her, presuming that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had come with her weeping, he became perturbed and deeply troubled and said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Sir, come and see. And Jesus wept. So the Jews said, See how we loved him. But some of them said, Could not the one who opened the eyes of the blind man have done something so that this man would not have died? So Jesus, perturbed again, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone lay across it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the dead man's sister, said to him, Lord, by now there will be a stench. He has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus raised his eyes and said, Father, I thank you for hearing me. I know that you always hear me, but because of the crowd here, I have said this, that they may believe that you sent me. And when he had said this, he cried out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, tied hand and foot with burial bands, and his face was wrapped in a cloth. So Jesus said to them, Untie him and let him go. Now many of the Jews who had come to Mary and seen what he had done began to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Dear friends, we're all experiencing it, aren't we, to some extent right now. Something terrible has come among us. In our grief, we wonder if this terrible, unexpected reality will have the last word. Is a long night ahead of us, or is there some light? Does coronavirus have the last word? In our first reading from the prophet Ezekiel, the nation of Israel, God's own and chosen people, now in captivity, has seemingly been brought down. They're in Babylon, prisoners and slaves. Jerusalem and the temple God's city and dwelling are reduced to rubble. The spirit of this people is understandably dry and hopeless, like long dead bones. But God speaks through the prophet Israel. He will open this grave. He will raise even these long dead bones God will have the last word. God has the last word. And it's a word of hope and a word of life. In the Gospel, it happens to Martha and her sister Mary. Their loss is personal grief, surely, their brother. But it leaves these two women alone. And remember that this is a man's world. Women alone easily become marginal and precarious. So, does death here have the final word? Surely they hope for resurrection, Martha says, on the last day. But what about tomorrow? 
Add to this the disappointment that Jesus didn't show up on time. Did you hear it? Have you felt at times like Martha's grieving words, Lord, if you had been here? But Jesus doesn't just talk. He does assure Martha then and us today that resurrection is not a far away event. Where Jesus is, there is resurrection. Then for them, here in the word of God, here at the altar of the Eucharist, here in the care of the church for one another, there is Jesus, there is resurrection. It's as true for us as it was for them. So we see Jesus stand before death, before long dead bones, and shout, Lazarus, come out. The final word, not death, life. You and I are a few weeks away from the central story of our faith, Holy Week and Easter. We will see Jesus' family and his disciples and we'll watch as death grips even him. Their gut like ours is wrenched as they lay their hope in a stone-cold tomb. But death for Jesus, it bursts forth in a word that cannot be reversed. We'll sing and shout it together at Easter. He is risen. Once and for all, death and the power of death are forever defeated. Death for people of faith, for disciples of Jesus, for those whom God loves, never has the final word. In all these stories, death does not get the final word. Oh, it will scare us. It may even terrify us. But no. God has spoken the final word. It's Jesus and his promise. I am the resurrection and the life. So the question with which we're left today was first asked of Martha, as he's asked of people of faith down through every generation. Jesus asks it of her, and we might ask it of ourselves as we gather this Sunday. I am the resurrection and the life. Do you believe this? Do you believe that life has the final word? A blessed Sunday to one and all. Together we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We join the church around the world in this time of grief and fear to lift up our voices in, in faithful prayer.
conscious that when we pray together, the Lord Jesus prays with us and his spirit prays in us. Let us pray for the church in this time of coronavirus, that it be a comforting and welcoming community around the globe, that it offer healing and uplifting, that it offer strength and comfort. We pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. And let us pray for world leaders. Let us pray for that they make wise and compassionate decisions, that they reach out in generosity to those who are suffering, regardless of national or uh, ethnic boundaries. We pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, especially those suffering from the coronavirus, for healthcare personnel who courageously stand in the face of this danger, for those who are dying, for those who mourn, we pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. We pause for a moment in silence to add the prayers that lie within our hearts. For all who have asked for our prayers and need our prayers, we pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. And for ourselves, that during this time of danger and fear, we be models of faith and courage and reach out to those around us in the name of Christ the Lord, we pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. Let us remember and pray for our brothers and sisters who have died. Let us pray for those who have died in recent days. Let us pray for those who mourn their dead, that they know Christ's comforting presence as Martha and Mary did. We pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, guide us on this Lenten journey as our hearts are fearful and our faith is weak. Strengthen us so that we come through these Lenten days to Easter with heart and mind renewed through Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through, through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as true man, he wept for Lazarus, his friend, and as eternal God raised him from the tomb. Just as taking pity on the human race, he leads us by sacred mysteries to new life. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You
You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the offering of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saints Martha and Mary, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, Sean, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There, we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. 
graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with all of you. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Everyone who lives and believes in me will not die forever, says the Lord. Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ, in whose body and blood we have communion. He lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Bless, O Lord, your people who long for the gift of your mercy, and grant that what at your prompting they desire, they receive by your generous gift through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Go forth in peace. Thanks be to God.